Okay. Welcome. Drink with James, episode 115. I am back from Italy. Uh, I would say begrudgingly, but I am always excited to come back from vacation. Uh, I, I, I am shocked every time you go abroad just how bad the internet is. You know, like the phones and the like 3G LTE networks have caught up. They're all pretty much the same. But every house that we've ever rented, every hotel I've ever stayed in, the, the internet is just unfathomably bad. Um, so I'm always excited to get back to good internet. I'm always excited to get back to my routine as I get older. I just want to like wake up at the same time every day, be able to exercise, uh, eat a salad for lunch, and then go home and have a Manhattan and go to sleep. Um, what else do I like about America? Uh, that's about it. Wi-Fi and my routine is essentially it. Um, but Italy was lovely. A lot of you were, you know, laughing on my Instagram commenting about Positano. I know that my Positano rant has, has been uh, divisive. Some on the pro-Positano side, some on the con or anti-Positano side. And I was thinking about it, and I, I said this on Instagram, but I'll, I'll reiterate for those of you who don't follow me, which you should. Um, but I was thinking about, I think my issue is that, you know, working in this industry with influencers, um, and being a part of the industry, you, you do see the power, right? You see what happened to, uh, what's that place I don't like in Mexico? Tulum, right? Like influencers, people started going there and, and, and y'all are influential and so more and more people went and then you, on Instagram you see the same vacation over and over and over again. And I think what I was thinking about why I even, what do I like about travel? Um, and I think that, again, if you're fortunate enough to go, um, and you're fortunate enough to travel. I think the, for me, the things that are the most fun are those, those unexpected things that happen, the things that go wrong, the, the, you know, um, the little things that you didn't plan out. And it feels more and more like people are planning their vacations based on the photos they want to get that their favorite Instagram, Instagrammer got. And so they, they say, I'm going to go to Positano and I'm going to go to this restaurant and I'm gonna sit on this balcony and I'm gonna take this picture. That just is, you know, feels very sad to me. And it's, it's, not, it's not that I am sad for consumers doing that. I'm saying like, I'm seeing other influencers do that. They look at what the big influencers are doing and they say, ooh, that did really well, so I'm gonna go do the same thing. I'm gonna get on the wooden boat in Capri and I'm gonna go into the arches and like hold my finger up. I'm gonna like sit on this balcony um, overlooking Positano and take a photo and like this exact balcony. And so it like it removes, it removes this level of exploration that I think is, is interesting. And it, 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 when you build your life optimizing for like engagement over experiences, I think it just starts to get really sad and hollow and, and not very fun to follow, really. Um, and I think a lot about what we say in the show is like, you know, end of the day, if you have a point of view and you're consistent and you've got some talent and a lot of luck, this can work out for you. Uh, but it's never going to work out if you're just copying people and, and doing what they do. Um, and you should learn from those people who are, have been really successful. You should look at what they do and try and understand why it's successful. But just because Tezza's photo on this one beach in Positano did really well, doesn't mean you have to find the exact fucking same lounge chair that she sat on and wear the same bikini and filter the photo in the same way to get that engagement. Um, so that was my, I, I think that we are gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put a bow on the Positano content and I'm gonna say that is the last time I'm gonna talk about it. Um, also, I'm drinking LaCroix today. Um, tomorrow, the company is going on a retreat. Um, we're out of the office the rest of the week. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. It should be a decent amount of drinking. I also have been out for a week in Italy and we had yesterday off because of Labor Day. So the whole office has like one day to get a week's worth of work done. So it is a high stress situation here today. Very busy. It's 3 p.m. I can't have a whiskey yet. So we've got LaCroix. 
lemon is the only flavor, don't at me. Um, so that's what's happening here. So Question number one, how can a company manage the success of an influencer campaign? Good question, whoever asked it. Uh, there are a lot of ways. I'm going to answer this less in the less from a, a lens of a brand person and more how it affects you. Every brand is evaluating the success of that campaign in a different way. If you don't understand the metrics by which they're valuing that campaign, it is nearly impossible for you to be successful. So, I believe we've said this before, but when someone briefs you or you talk to the brand and they onboard you for the campaign, you gotta ask, what are your KPIs, key performance indicators? What does success look like for you in this campaign? How do I make you look good? You know, if you talk to the person you at the brand and you say, hey, I wanna make you look good. I wanna make sure that this looks awesome for you. What does that look like for you? Is it really great engagement? Is it positive comments and a conversation happening in the, in the comments section? Is it the amount of DMs I get? Is it sales? Is it swipe ups? It could be any number of things, but if success for them is swipe ups and you think it's engagement, then you could get 10% engagement, but not do as well in swipe ups on your Insta stories and they won't work with you next time. So you have to ask, one. I think two, you know, something that I've noticed that sticks with brands is they're looking at all these numbers. You know, now a lot of our campaigns have 50, 100 influencers in them. And so certainly we look for top performers, but so we also pull out conversations in the comments that are really product focused and feel organic and natural and feel like, oh, here's a consumer complimenting the product or talking about the product. I know a lot of influencers, you guys get in your comment pods and you guys comment on each other's posts, especially sponsored posts, and you make product specific comments on the sponsored posts, that is so easy to tell what you're doing, first of all. Like when I see an influencer and 15 of their influencer friends have commented on it, saying, oh my God, I love that jacket, I have to get that tomorrow. Like you're not fooling anyone, the brand is gonna click through and see that you have 150,000 followers and you're also an influencer and if they're smart, they'll say, oh, they're in a comment pod trying to make each other look good. Um, but that's one thing. Two, if you are someone that, that has conversations about product happening in the comments section, um, it is something that brands look out for. Um, it is something that they kind of focus on and pull out. So anytime that you have that, that is good. But in general, ask them what success looks like and try and optimize for that. Um, if, if they say, oh yeah, well we're focused on engagement but we also want sales and we want swipe ups um, and we want really beautiful editorial comment, content, it's okay to push back and say, I can, do, I can try and do all of those things but I really wanna know what we call it a keystone KPI. So I really wanna know what is the one thing you absolutely need is it beautiful content? Is it swipe ups? Is it sales? Um, you can't do all of those things in one post realistically. So you can push back on a brand that is asking for too much and saying, I, I don't know, I, I can't do that. Um, it shouldn't be the first time they heard it and I think they will respect you more um, if you do push back. Question number two, are influencers becoming cookie cutter and starting to look the same? Yes and no. Uh, annoying, I know. I try and, and add new, interesting, diverse, different voices into my feed uh, every once in a while. If, if you're feeling like you're starting to see the same thing, I encourage you to, to reach out and to, to you know, try and find new people to follow. I do think there is but humans have a herd mentality. They want to be part of a group. They, want to, they don't like to go out and, and do new things that scares people. That's totally understandable. That is, that is human nature. Um, so I think compound, like with that is also the fact that it's gotten harder and harder and harder to grow and be successful on Instagram. 
So I think increasingly people look at what works and they try and do that. I mean, how many, how many Kim lookalikes are there in the beauty space? Well, Kim has 113 million Instagram followers. It's obviously working well for her. Her look, her whole vibe, everything that she's about works. So like, in some ways it makes sense to, to copy that because if you like Kim, you might like a couple of people that are kind of like Kim. That is how the, the thinking goes. Tezza, who we talk about all the time, doing really well. It's not crazy that there seem to be thousands of clones because her content is doing exponentially better than other people's. Her growth is off the charts right now. And so people think, I'm just going to copy that and I am going to, and I'll get the same level of success. We've said it many times on the show. I really think that that is the wrong mentality. I think that going out and trying to copy one of Tesla's photos makes sense insofar as it helps you learn how to do that. And I think you can learn from that and try and take something from it and make it your own. Um, I, I do not think you can copy your way into long standing success because at some point the world will change, tastes will change, the things people want will change. And if your success is not built on an original thought, then it probably goes to stand that you won't have the next original thought. And so where well, you're going to spend your life just chasing people and copying, copying different people. One, I don't think that would work Two, It doesn't really sound like a huge amount of fun. Um, and so yes, there are too many people who are looking the same. Um, and no, I do not think that that is a uh, hugely unique human problem. Um, I think that that is, is, is fairly common. Communities do start to look, act, talk similar. I mean, when I used to be a photographer, I was always like, shocked like every single model wears skinny black jeans motorcycle boots a white t-shirt and a black leather coat it like literally it is like the store does not allow them to purchase anything else um, that community spends a lot of time together and they start to develop a dress code and a way of speaking to each other and a way of dressing and a way of carrying themselves and all of that um, that helps them identify with that. You know, influencers dress in a certain way, they take photos in a certain way, they go to certain places. Um, it's not crazy. I, I, don't, I think you could look at any community um, and you would probably start to see those similarities. Even fringe, you know, there's always that thing that like, if you're, let's say you're, you know, part of a, the goth movement or you're a punk or you're super preppy or you like, you know, menswear, all of these, in all of these subsets, everyone essentially kind of looks the same to somebody who is on the outside, who doesn't know the nuances, who doesn't know the difference between, you know, what a Sex Pistols fan would dress like versus, you know, give me another punk band. Uh, Ramones. A Ramones fan would dress like, you know, but inside the punk community, there probably is a difference between dressing as a Sex Pistols fan and dressing as a Ramones fan, but to like the 60 year old, British woman walking down the street, they just look like fucking punks. Um, so I think it's similar in the influencer space where from the outside it looks like everyone's the same, no one's doing anything interesting. As you get into it a little bit more, you start to see the nuance, you start to see things different, but from the outside it looks like, you know, Cartier love bracelets and a lot of, you know, complicated, complicated clothing. Again, it's, it's, it's tough because you want to be able to show I'm part of this community and if you're a punk in London in 1979, you can't show up to a show in a suit and tie and, and like be accepted into that community. You're going to have to wear leather and ripped up clothes and have a green mohawk. That's just like, that's the way you say, hey, I'm part of this community. Um, but I think once you, that's why I say that like it's not totally a bad thing to copy people for a little while. Um, you don't even have to publish it, but by copying it, you, st you can start to understand it. Um, can, can you live inside of a community for a bit, understand it, and then know how to be different? I think so. Um, it's going to be hard to, unless you're like, just have a totally unique new vi vision,
to come in, say, I'm not, I'm part of this community, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be totally outside of it, and change the way everyone feels about it. I don't, you know, I think that is harder. Um, but, as we say, I, I think a lot of the potential and possibility of growth and success in this space hinges now on looking different, being different, doing something different, um, trying to, to be unique and do your own thing. Uh, question number three, what do you think of non-beauty travel fitness influencers? Uh, I'm considering shifting to a niche. Uh, don't know if many people will be interested. Uh, perfect springboard off the last one. Yes, there is a homogeny in the space. Yes, everyone's seen the same things. Gimmicks, niches often work. It is harder to get widespread huge success. It's harder to grow a niche account to 500,000 followers, but it might be easier to grow it to 20 or 30,000 followers and maybe inside of that niche you can become a superstar. This is, a, this is your classic big fish little pond, um, but I don't think of it in a negative connotation. Um, and as far as will people be interested in the niche, there's, uh, there's a billion Instagram users. One billion. Okay, so 30% of them never use it. So there's 700 million people logging into the site you're trying to get 100,000 followers. You, you can definitely, it doesn't matter what your niche is, uh, my assumption is that there is a following out there that is interested in it. Finding that following can be very difficult. Um, again, as we were saying with, you know, using our example of like communities and punk, um, the more niche a interest, the more they guard their communities. I'm a cyclist, Tim's a runner. Um, these are niche, small communities that have hierarchies inside them and have rules about how you can dress, what you can wear in cycling. You know, the big differentiator is like shaving your legs or not. Um, these things matter. If you show up to a group ride and you have the wrong jersey on and your legs aren't shaved, people kind of look at you and say, oh, this person doesn't know what they're doing. Um, so I think that if you look at the beauty community, or beauty as a community, um, they are probably more accepting. But as you zero into a very small niche in beauty and say, okay, I'm just gonna speak to this tiny community, I think they would generally would be more protective of that community. So it would be harder for you potentially to come in and um, get that community to look at you as a leader. Um, because being passionate about something that is weird and different is a very specific type of person that involves themselves in those kinds of communities and that person is generally quite passionate, quite invested. They love this thing that they're, this weird thing that they're into. Um, so I think you have to be that much better to um, be successful in that niche. Um, so there's pros and cons uh, of both sides of, you know, speaking to the masses and doing something more broad and trying to do it that way and in going into something super niche. Um, I think if you, again, your North Star should be like, what am I passionate about? What are the things I like? If you are a beauty influencer and you're thinking, you know what, this isn't really getting me out of bed anymore and what I want to talk about is woodworking, then you should fucking talk about woodworking. You know, I mean, my feed, again, I'm not an influencer by any means, but if you look at you know, a couple of years ago, I almost exclusively talked about fashion, and then I almost exclusively talked about cycling, and now most of my followers are y'all. They're my engaged followers or influencers, and so more and more, I am, you know, still documenting my life, but I'm trying to talk about influencers and talk about the space and, you know, weave some of that in because that is who my following is, and so I do think that, you know, you can you can change and try different things. Um, and just because you built a following one way doesn't mean that those people won't be interested in something else. And you should just do what you're into, you know? And, 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 and if you're super passionate about something, I think it'll, it'll come off and people will enjoy following that. And if they don't, they'll unfollow you. Who the fuck cares, you know? Go find someone else to follow you that cares about what you have to say. 
Um, so I think end of the day, the goal is to be interesting. And you gotta ask yourself, in what, in what place, in what community, in what vertical, can I create the most interesting, entertaining, and educational content and do that, do it well, do it consistently, enjoy it, send me whiskey. That's it. We're done? Okay, that is it. Um, we are gonna go finish this hectic day and then we are gonna go sit in the Catskills um, and live in tents and go hiking and sail uh, and go apple picking. So that's, that's on my agenda. Keep sending questions. Cheers. Mm -hmm.